welcome back to Creative Chat Cafe. I am Zaf Zan. And hi, I'm Sandra Firestein. And we are your hosts at Creative Chat Cafe, a weekly online talk show where lifestyle entrepreneurs hang out to discuss ideas, share experiences, provide tips, guidance, resources, and inspiration that will help you achieve success. And um, I always tell people, if you're a busy person, you always want to take some time out to hang out, to get some guidance and inspiration and results for your business. And if you're wondering what's, um, what's on our show today, we have uh, a topic uh, that's uh, called tips from a busy mom who runs an e-commerce business. And the hashtag for the show is hashtag creative chat cafe and tweet us at C chat cafe. And that's another one that's called hashtag CCC time to hang out. And um, yeah, welcome everybody. Hi. <laughs> I'm really excited for this episode because we're still celebrating Mother's Day. It may have been, what, ooh, almost a week ago already, but we really wanted to honor our mompreneurs. So like you said, Zeph, today's episode is tips from a busy mom who runs an e-commerce business, and we have my good friend Kristen Hill, who's an Etsy mompreneur. So welcome to the show, Kristen. I know a lot about you, but the whole world doesn't. So this is your opportunity. Tell us your story. What's your background? What do you do? How did you get started? We want to hear it all. Yep, we do. And we want to know the name of that little gal. <laughs> for today. Woohoo! Hello. Hello. This is Addie. Can you say hi, hi Addie. Hi, Addie. Hello. So I have a background in English. That was my, that was where I wanted to go in life, being an English teacher. Mm -hmm. And then up and once I had this little one, I got into more crafting and making headbands and tutus and um, pursuing working from home as, you know, not having a second income. I couldn't spend all the money on all the cute things that come with having a yeah. little girl. <laughs> um, That's true. I started making all of her headbands and little outfits, and uh, people took notice and wanted to, uh, me to make it for them and pushed me to open an Etsy store. That's awesome. Awesome. Yeah. And I think, you know, what's great about that, and I I really have to say I love I would love to celebrate you because uh, part of being a mom, you know, when you have, uh, you you were just being resourceful, you know, and you're thinking ahead. And I think that's what's great about what you've done. You know, you, you're at a position where you think, you know, you know, I'm now with, uh, uh, with, uh, you know, uh, being a home, uh, stay home mom, you know, what can I do to earn extra income? And you were being resourceful and thinking, hey, I have this passion, I have this gift, I have this skill set, therefore, you know, I'm going to probably try to, um, you know, find a, a revenue, a, a stream of revenue. And I have to say, kudos to you for doing, doing that. <laughs> so let me quickly ask you, right, so you picked e-commerce, you picked, uh, and I understand you do Etsy, yeah, yeah. Christine? I'm sorry, can you repeat that? <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. She, Eddie wants to be a superstar too, you know? Um, I was asking, I say, you picked e commerce and you picked Etsy um, as your uh, selling platform, is that correct? Yes, that is correct. So do you have tips for you know other busy moms like you who run an e commerce business to just kind of be successful uh, in an e commerce business like Etsy? Um, you know, it's really hard with being a mom, it's full time and it just sucks out my energy. But with Etsy, you know, I'm reading blogs and I'm a part of Facebook Etsy blog posts and whatnot. And all of those uh, sellers will tell you that Etsy has to be a full time job as well. You know, it's just right. it's not about making your craft and posting it online and you're going to get all these sales. You know, it's having to still take good pictures and get on all the um, Etsy, Instagram, Facebook pages and using those hashtags and doing the research to find the right hashtags and you know you still have to market like crazy. Yes, that's true because it is a business, right? We want to make sure that if you're successful, uh, you know, you're doing all that you can 
to um, try to make your business successful. And I, uh, I, I think you're absolutely right. And I like your approach that you're taking it as a business and you're treating it as, as a business. What makes it easier is because you get to do it from the comfort of your own home. Well, so, and it helps that she has a beautiful model to put all these adorable little baby things on, too. So it's like the best marketing. Because that's the hard part, finding a model. Oh, there she is. Hi, <laughs> Daddy. <laughs> that's so true. I, I mean, that, that comes with, with the territory. You don't yeah. have to pay an extra person for it, you know? No, so Exactly, yeah. So with doing all that, right, it's uh, because you're running a business, you, you're a busy a mom, a busy schedule, and creating that work-life balance can also be challenging. But what do you do to kind of manage all these angles, all these different moving parts, which, which uh, includes managing, uh, managing your product creation, uh, managing your website and customer service? Because I know with Etsy, like you said, take pictures, and then you have to create the products, and then customer service. So what are some of the things that, you've done to kind of balance it all out? It is literally about time management and using every, you know, having a schedule, as long as having a schedule with a baby, you know, I keep to it every single day. Um, I wake up, I've started waking up an hour before she does, so that usually gets me drinking my coffee and writing down what I want to accomplish for the day. Because if I can physically see what I want to do, that gets me off my phone, out of watching TV. You know, I physically have my goals for the day, and it will make me set them. Um, when, you know, once she wakes up, though, for three hours, it's hanging out with her, going to the park, whatnot. Um, but once her nap time hits, that's usually when I do my replying to customers, do my ordering, you know. And Monday through Friday, like Mondays are usually my ordering days. I order all my supplies. Tuesdays are my fabric cutting days. You know, just every day has something that I do. Right. And then my nights, though, is once she goes to bed at 7, mm -hmm. 7 to midnight or 1 a.m., I'm making everybody's products. I mean, wow. it's so wow. exhausting, but it's just yeah. that's when I have to use my time is when she's asleep. Yeah. <laughs> Well, so I mean, everything that I've heard about having a baby is that you have to get used to routine, right? You have to get the baby used to routine. That's how you you teach them structure. And so, you know, you're you're having to get that structure for yourself. It's almost like you have to treat yourself with that same kind of respect of, okay, I I can't not know what's coming up. I have to make sure that I know what Monday is for. That way, I don't have to waste energy. Wondering how I should use my time. It's just you know what Monday's for, you know what Tuesday is for. I think that's really smart. Yeah. Yeah. So every day, you know, that's along with my cleaning and my cooking. I mean, Tuesdays right. are clean up, and you know, it's every part of my life is structured. Life goes on. Yeah. Yeah. And I love the fact that you're mentioning it this to uh, you know our audience out there because I'm sure for those moms who are listening in, and I think it's also visual for our audience today because you're looking at Christine right here. You know she's uh, she's with Eddie and she's you know um, she's on the call and I really don't mind. And some people ask me you know um, is it okay uh, for a show? <laughs> of course it's okay. It's a Creative Chat Cafe. We oh have welcome to the real world. I know yeah. and right with. This is what my life is like yeah. and I, well and I I think that we're fed this you know so often when we see moms with careers it's once right. they put their kids in school right and this is what it means to have a really young very energetic child and if we're getting a super exposure as she guzzles her coffee <laughs> super exposure to the reality of being a mompreneur and it's yeah. not easy and we somehow have gotten used to this idea that Women are supposed to do absolutely everything. We're supposed to keep the house nice. We're supposed to be an excellent mother. We're supposed to be an excellent friend. And then we're still supposed to make the money. And this is, I mean, you're living so many lives in one right now. Yeah. I'm so impressed. Yeah. And then, uh, you know, the fact that, you know, not only that, the business, the baby and the children, and then you have the husband, right? <laughs> That's a great thing. Yeah, right? <laughs> That's a different story, right? But here's, Guess what I really like what you mentioned there just now is you kind of lay out uh, for our audience out there your schedule for the week, you know, so you really have great planning. So in order to be successful in an e-commerce business, if you're a stay-at-home mom and, you know, you have schedule to manage your days in your week and mm -hmm. what you do on the specific days. Sandra, and I know doing what yeah. you do, you know, um, 
what's one way if there's one thing a client like Christine comes to you you know what's one way you think you can help mompreneurs like Christine feel like they have more time to spend on both business and personal life yeah so actually funny enough Kristen was like my very first client um, and she and I'm so thankful for her for that and at the time this is just a small example at the time she was like look, I've got this baby that requires so much of my attention. She goes, but I also have this little dog that needs to be walked. And so I would actually walk her dog for her. And so the reason I bring this up is some of the stuff that, that really can, can feel like a burden isn't even necessarily that big of a task. It's just you've run out of time and you've run out of patience for it. So that's where I come in and help mompreneurs is, Look, you know, going to the grocery store is still a challenge when you have a fussy little one, and that's stealing a very valuable potential hour and a half of your day. Let me take over stuff like that. If you do need help maybe ordering things online, you know, really passing off these to-dos that pop up that, yeah, you can do it, but really it's just going to stress you out more to have to worry about it. I'd rather take care of it for you for a nominal fee so that you can just Maybe get that nap when Addie's also napping, or whatever it may be. Um, and so I just try to pick up that weight wherever I can. Um, you know, I do help. I, I work with other mompreneurs. I actually help them write their blog posts every month, something that needs to get done. It's a steady stream of marketing. But, man, is that an exhausting task, especially when you're not really there mentally because you're being pulled in a million directions. All I need is the topic, and we've got it for you. Um, and so there's a lot of different ways that I can help people, and it's just a matter of where you feel your priorities are. I can step in and pick up a lot of the weight that, that isn't your priority. And I love that you talk about priorities, Sandra, because um, here's my thought, right? So uh, I think in one of our previous episodes, we did mention that, you know, we being women as a base, and especially if you're a mom, you're so used to doing everything on your own, and you just don't know how to delegate. And right a big challenge for us women because we're so used to doing everything right. we don't even talk about mompreneurs we're talking about women in general right, right. so we're talking about delegation making priorities what I've learned in fact for my business it took me a little while to get there delegating the right. to other people because you're always thinking oh no no one's going to do it as good as you do right? right but the fact is hello there will some people who does it better than you do. Hello, right? Well, and I also want to bring up an important, um, you know, I've been dealing with a client lately that's so good at delegating that it's actually a hindrance. She wow. started passing off so much stuff that she doesn't know who's responsible for what. So if you are in the position of being able to delegate, you know, I recommend finding someone that you can use as your one source. Someone, someone, you know, I'm not the only one that offers this, these types of services. You can find all sorts of different types. Maybe it's a nanny that you, you, you talk to, you know, depending on your situation. If you're going to delegate, delegate in a way that's useful to you so that you're not all of a sudden stressed out about who's in charge of what. You have one point of contact or one organized way of delegating that work so that you don't have to stress out about it. Because that's something that I started to see is that sometimes people say, you know what, I, I can't deal, I can't deal, and they're so frustrated with it that they don't even remember who they asked to do that for them, and then all of a sudden they're behind or whatever it may be. Um, so just that's another piece of advice. It's just, you know, maybe keep a list. Okay, I sent, you know, my sister to go do my, my dry cleaning this week, or, you know, just keep track of that uh, once you start getting better at delegating. Or it could be something as simple as, I just need somebody to clean my house. Do you know what I mean? Because exactly. that's, that's a great thing for we women, right? <laughs> <laughs> so, Kristen, I want to ask, what is it about having a baby that uses up so much of your energy? I mean, obviously, we see Addie flying around all the time, but... You know, she uses up a lot of your energy, but she also gives you energy. So, you know, what is that relationship like with your child? You know, it's just at the drop of a hat, you know, I have to feed her. I have to, you know, whatever she needs, I have to stop and do. Um, you know, being 15 months old now, she's not just a blob on the ground. You know, right. she, I can tell when she's bored. So it's like, okay, let's, let's go to the park and, um, you know, it's just the most selfless thing I've ever had to do is be a mom and think of her. But the energy, you know, I love, we go to the park two times a day and just seeing her, 
her get yeah. so excited over a leaf or a stick, you know, it's like, whoa. you know, yesterday she just sat down in the middle of a path and played in the dirt. Like, I wish I could just have that, you know, right. sit down wherever and play with what's around me and be so happy, you know, so it just, it's so cool to see through her eyes how excited anything is. Right. So on the yeah. days that you're white, how do you determine what's a better use of your energy? Keep building the business or bonding with the baby? Like what, how do you, how do you figure that out for yourself? Is it instinct? Is it, you know, strategy? What's your method? You know, it's knowing that she, you know, babies are sponges. They suck in everything. And she has to know that she's my number one priority and that I can't ignore her, you know, because she will, she's at that age where she will remember and take things. You know, I don't want her to think she was a hindrance to me. So it's her seeing that. But sometimes I do have a deadline. So she has to see that mom, you know, puts customers out there too and I can get things done. So it's a learning, you know, she's, no. <laughs> Sorry. Testing you. She's like, uh, yeah. I want to be in front of the camera too, mom. <laughs> Pay attention to me, mom. <laughs> yes. Well, she's really lucky to have a mom. You know, I never really knew my mom to work. Um, and yeah. I actually, I was in a really unique position. Of, my parents were, were so good at making time for me and my brother that we actually in some ways got a distorted perspective of how much work really goes into building a career. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think that there is a lot of value in although your child is your priority also showing her from an early age look we all have to work our little tails off to be able to make things work the way that we want. Um, and so you know it's definitely I, I know that some some people feel guilty when they're working and not with their kid, but there's a huge lesson in that for the kid as well. That look, sometimes, you know, yeah, I'd rather be playing with you. Do I want to have to have a job? No, not really. I want to just cuddle with you all day. But the reality is, we all have to find ways to contribute to society, and you've chosen your e commerce business as one of those ways to make other moms happy and. You know, it's not just that you're grinding out a job. You're actually making other people really happy. And that's, you know, that's because that you offer really good service. I mean, we see your five-star reviews popping up all the time. People love working with you. And so you're an example to Addie in that way as well, just showing, look, I'm exhausted, but I still, I'm, that doesn't mean that I'm falling short with these other people. That you're always performing to the best of your ability with whoever is in front of you. So she's lucky to see that. You make a great point there, Sandra, because I really think you're absolutely right when you said, you know, it's a great thing that you, we allow the kids to see what we do for them. You know, they may not get it at Eddie's age or probably at 10 years old, but as they, you know, as they grow together and, you know, uh, especially if parents can actually get their kids involved in the, right. in the parts of the business, you know, make them understand we're going to do this because, you know, we want to make sure that we take care of our customers. You know, uh, I'm doing this because it makes me stay home, be with you, but at the same time, I can build a business for us for the future. And I think that's really commendable. So folks, um, if you're watching and um, the show and you're just tuning in, um, today's episode is Tips from a Busy Mom Who Runs an E-Commerce Business. And I'm joined by my co-host, Sandra Feierstein, and our guests, Kristen Hill and Etsy Mompreneur. And if you're not sure what an Etsy is, an Etsy is a website, an e-commerce platform where you can sell your products. Yeah. And um, if you're following our show, if you're wondering our hashtags, the hashtag for our show is hashtag CCC time to hang out and hashtag creative chat cafe. You can tweet us at C chat cafe. And so you brought out, she's an Etsy mompreneur. So Kristen, can, I've never had an Etsy. Zeph, I don't think you've had an Etsy. How does Etsy work? How easy is it to set up? Can any mompreneur do this? What's you feel say? Any mom can uh, set up and anybody can buy from it. You don't have to sell, which I mean, when I was getting married, I bought a lot of stuff off of Etsy. I wanted to support, you know, local small shops that hand make their products. Um, I never thought I'd have my own Etsy, but it's very easy to set up. Um, okay. But it, it's not just setting up and immediately getting sales. I mean, it takes 
a lot of work, a lot of pictures, descriptions, which I wasn't prepared for, but I mean, it's just, it's a lot of effort and you know, it, it's a big success once you get that first, it's literally your phone says cha-ching. When you get a <laughs> ka-ching is like this, right? It's the yeah. sound of money. Oh, you got it. Ka-ching. There we go. <laughs> ka-ching. <laughs> So when you get that first day, I mean, it literally scares you to yeah. hear it, but it's a sale and it's so exciting. After and I mean, it comes right music to your years, right, Christine? Because you're like, ka-ching, more ka-ching means more money. <laughs> Cha-ching, yeah. <laughs> So have you um, have you ever tried um, eBay? Because I know they're similar in platform. I mean, the platform is kind of similar, but eBay is a little bit more advanced. It's more like different moving parts. Because I've done eBay, um, say probably about five years ago, and I did quite well. And after a while, I was like, wow, that's exhausting. Like you said, take pictures, description, not only pictures, one picture for one product. You can get the best angles do that and I also used to do um, videos for the stuff that I sold and I'm like wow this is exhausting so is it uh, is it comparable to um, is Etsy comparable to eBay um, it is with Etsy though you have uh, five photo slots and they do say it's important to use all five slots um, eBay I have sold a couple times Cha-ching, yes <laughs> I have sold a couple things on there, but again, it's so hard to balance. You know, I just signed up with Inselly as well, so trying to balance all of these different selling platforms, right. you know, doing the description. So um, I am primarily focused on Etsy right now. Okay. Well, and Etsy specializes in, you know, eBay, anyone can sell on eBay, and it, you can have massive companies that are selling there, but when you work with Etsy, my understanding is that it's only kind of solopreneurs, small businesses that are selling on Etsy. So you're exactly. selling artisans. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's more simplified, right, Christine? Yeah. It's simplified? Yeah. Sim yeah. I mean, it's supposed to be handmade, vintage um, products. So, thank you. Um, <laughs> very different from Etsy. Okay. So, if, if somebody was listening out there, mom or whoever, who's thinking about using Etsy, right? So, just from your experience, just from getting this set up, how long have you had it set up for? Um, just had my year anniversary. Hi, congratulations. Oh, congratulations. <laughs> so, do you have any kind of... Uh, tips and tricks for you know any of our audience out there who are really considering using Etsy for the business. A friend of mine used to sell on Etsy. What she did, uh, her product was um, cloth baby diapers. So um, she did really well in it. And just like you mentioned, I see her make the product and then you know um, sell it on Etsy take pictures and a customer service, shipping and all that stuff. But if that was a few tips and tricks that you from your own experience with selling on Etsy, what would that be? Sorry. <laughs> You're fine. <laughs> She's like, put me on. Just like, a couple more minutes, honey. We're almost there. <laughs> Can you repeat the question? I said, do you have any tips and tricks for our audience who are considering to use Etsy for their business? Uh, yeah, definitely uh, go for it. Don't be you know, scared uh, to open an, an account. Just be prepared to treat it as a full-time job, even if you're not getting sales. You, know, you need to constantly be making your product better and taking good pictures and just constantly pushing yourself, even if you're not getting sales, to keep marketing your product and just, you know, I actually started uh, selling on local mom groups, which got my um, confidence up. And so, the table. Sure, okay. Addy, only a couple more minutes. This is, folks, this is the real world. And I love the fact that you're seeing this. 
because I think sometimes, like what you said earlier, Sandra, right? Sometimes we only see women in suits and stuff like that. And through the show, I think being lifestyle entrepreneurs, this is what lifestyle entrepreneurs do. You know, we roll the punches and we, you get to see the real life and it's okay. Cause I think that brings us a heightened awareness that there are many other people out there that are like Christine, like Sandra, like myself. So, Hey, well, and I think that's also a really good reminder to people who don't yet have children who sometimes <laughs> light of the effort that goes in. Sure. Hey man, if you're working on building your career, it's a man. Am I busy already? Can I imagine having that squirming little monster writhing all over me? No, I can't. So, you know, I, you know, I think it's great when moms, ugh, I mean, like you said, Kristen, it's self, it's selfless. I mean, you are trying to do everything you can to pour all of your love into this little being, but then also create something of value outside of it. It's, you know, it's a good reminder to someone like me that, okay, I'm actually not at a point yet where I could even, well, have children. I don't know. You know, like right now it's like, whoa, that's a lot of work. But at the same time, how many women do it? And, you know, we, we, we don't give enough credit. I don't think. Kudos to you. Kudos to you. Uh, so, so we're going to, um, you know, just have you finish that uh, tips and tricks for us. So other than, you know, not being afraid, just jump into it. Um, any other tips and tricks when using Etsy, the platform itself? Um, yeah, so just, um, sorry, uh, brain fart. Um, That's you, okay. Uh, uh, with Etsy, you'll notice on their titles, if you're, you know, my headbands, I do, um, you don't want to just write pink headband. You know, your titles have to be so descriptive. Wow. With a pink, elastic, newborn to adult, shabby wow. chic headband. Like, it has to be uh, so okay. specific. Um, they have a blog, actually. It's called the SEO of Etsy. Oh, I okay. um, highly recommend reading that. It gives you a lot of tips on how to how your title should be your descriptions um, I mean you have to have posts like how you're gonna ship it your sizes and again you want to take advantage of those five photo slots you know they want to see even how you package it could be one of your photo slots how it's going to arrive to a customer you know that's, awesome. yeah. that's a great yeah. trick, a trick I think because uh, you're you've been using it right and that's a great tip because I think titles are what make it easier to find things on Etsy. And if you want great, great, um, you know, SEO, use that as your um, search capability. Well, and like you also mentioned as well, as utilizing multiple social media platforms to constantly drive traffic in, right? Because there are people that use Instagram to shop for this kind of stuff, and then they just need to be led to your link. So it's reminding people, staying in front of them, I provide this, I provide this, we may not know each other, you may not use Etsy yet, but you use Instagram or you use Facebook. Or, I mean, I mean, there's so many different approaches, but you have to have these funnels coming into one source. So I think you're being really smart about that. Yeah, and I even on Etsy, I have my Instagram and Facebook link. I say, you know, yeah. if you like me on Facebook or Instagram, you get 10% off of your oh, purchase. Nice. Yeah, so, well, yeah. yeah. Smart. So. Well, cool. Well, thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank you so much for the very awakening view view of what a mompreneur goes through. Um, I mean, it's, it's really humbling to see how much effort goes into it. Um, so before we head out, we definitely want to give everyone a chance to talk about the best way to get in touch with us. So Kristen, this is your chance to talk to the mompreneurs or, or not even mompreneurs, mommies, just who want to buy headbands or whatever it may be. This is your chance to give information about how they should get in touch with you. So fire away. Uh, yeah, so thank you. Uh, my uh, Etsy name is Bell, B-E-L-L-E, -L -L -E, and boy. Uh, the same for Instagram and Facebook. I have a Facebook page, Bell and Boy, and you can conversation me in any of those. Um, I do custom orders, pretty much anything you want. I will be glad to <laughs> uh, try and help you out. Oh, yeah. fine. You make stuff for grown-ups, too, right? Like, your new thing is your mermaid tails. Is that right? Yeah, I'm making mermaid tail blankets. 
Oh, that's <laughs> super cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you sit on the couch and pretend you're a mermaid. <laughs> Go ahead, Sandra, your turn. All right. Yeah, so I'm Sandra Firestein. I'm the owner of PursuitOfSeattle.com. It's part-time personal assistance on a membership basis. So if you're a busy person and you'd like to have someone pick up the load, I'm here to help you. If you want to connect with me personally on Instagram or Twitter, I'm at Seattle Sandra. Uh, I'm always happy to talk to anyone. Um, I'm a solopreneur right now. I've got my team is growing, but you know, I know. Yeah, you know, I don't have a baby, but I'm a solopreneur. So we face our own challenges. <laughs> Lastly, I want to say, if you are living the life of your dreams and you have something awesome going on, add the hashtag Happy Seekers. I'm building an online community of people that are just committed to living the life of their dreams. So, uh, yeah, those are three ways to get. Thank you. Awesome. Um, I'm always, um, you know, um, in good company when I with Sandra and other of our guests who uh, you know share their stories like this so if you're pretty new to the show and you're wondering where do you want the show this is um, our website you can go to uh, the show I'm sorry the website entrepreneurs at sore.com and there's a tab that says web show you can uh, drop it down that's a creative chat cafe tab all our shows are in that um, in that tab there. You can catch up uh, with all our shows. We also have you know our Facebook, our um, uh, Google Plus community, our Twitter C Chat Cafe, and if you're a YouTuber and just love watching videos, um, you can go to YouTube and go to Entrepreneurs That Soar and check out all our um, playlists for Creative Chat Cafe shows. And again, here's our hashtag. Hashtag CCC time to hang out and hashtag Creative Chat Cafe. Tweet us at C Chat Cafe. Folks, thank you so much for watching uh, Creative Chat Cafe. And until we see you next week, I want to take this opportunity to thank Sandra Feistein and also Christine Knoll for being here with us today. Bye bye. Bye. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>